In FeatureCam 2015, programming of parts has been made easier with the inclusion of automatic collision checking of the tool shank and holder. Instigated with a simple checkbox, checking is done against the part, with both roughing and finishing toolpaths being automatically clipped to avoid such collisions. In this particular case, you can see we've got a brake caliper forging die. What we want to do is we want to machine this with a series of operations. If I go over to the part view, you can see a number of these operations have already been created. We have an initial roughing operation, we have a rest roughing operation, we have a parallel finish for this top face, and then we also have a steep and shallow. Now the first steep and shallow toolpath in this case has no checking applied to it. If I go ahead and do a 3D simulation, and in this case, if I go to my options simulation, I just highlight that I've got show holder switched on, and I've also got my pause on gauge and pause on gauge dialog switched on as well. So play my 3D simulation, I get my initial roughing with my step up, I then get my rest machining, I get that flat face finish, and then I get my steep and shallow operation working its way down the component. As we get lower and lower in the component, we get a collision. In this case, you can see the holder of the tool has collided with, with the part. I could try and continue to play this, but of course we've got continuous gouges and collisions. If I was to turn this off and just allow it to play through, you'll start to see the magenta shading on the model where the gouging or the colliding is occurring. Clearly we can see here the holder is taking the top of the part off. So this new functionality allows us to avoid this uh, problem by allowing us to turn off or hide uh, any areas or remove any areas of the toolpath that may be colliding with the component. This is quite straightforward. We go into the feature itself. In this case I'm going to go to the next one. So this one's collision checked. Into the steep and shallow and you'll see there's a new option here that says holder collision clipping. In this case I've got this option turned on. We then go to the finish tab and into milling and you have several settings that you can modify. So you can modify a shank clearance that will check the, the shank value of the part and you've also got a holder clearance uh, value which will allow us to uh, indicate how much space we want around the holder as well. So these two values will clip the toolpath any time that the, uh, the, either the shank or the holder gets close enough or within these uh, parameter values uh, to the part. So with this switched on, I'm just going to close that off, recalculate my toolpath, so there's my initial roughing, my rest machining, I get the flat face finish, and then I get my steep and shallow operation, only this time it's been collision checked. As I work my way down through the component, you'll notice the toolpath has been clipped. So the tool in this case has stopped short of any collision areas and removed those segments from the toolpath. However, I'm now left with an area of unmachined stock, so I need to rectify this. So one of the ways to tackle these areas, of course, we need a tool that's long enough to reach down inside the component. So we're going to take a, a measurement, in this case a vertical distance, from the bottom of that pocket up to the top, somewhere about there. And in this case, it's indicating a height of 49.9 millimeters. So we could go to, say, 55 just to be safe. So we can create a second toolpath. In this case, you can see we've got a second steep and shallow toolpath. And this is using a, the longer tool, so I've given, given it an extended tool, which has the correct exposed length, in this case, of 55 millimeters. I want to continue to use that shorter tool for the majority of the part to maintain rigidity, but I'm going to use this longer tool to machine those other areas. As well as uh, choosing a longer tool that's capable of machining that region, 
I also need to consider what the current stock state is. So in this case I can uh, go ahead and create a, a simulation. So I'm going to simulate, save those results as an STL file and that produces an STL that looks something like this. This gives me my current stock state. I can then simply apply this to a stop model which I've already done. So I have my stop model like so. And then in the final toolpath if we go back into the steep and shallow into the stock tab and under the stop model options we're using that same stop model and we've told it to detect material thicker than 0.2 millimeters so it will identify those regions and machine those unmachined stock areas. So the effect of this if I just preview that toolpath You can see that toolpath has been created for the area that was unmachined with the previous operation. So putting that all together as one final 3D simulation, you'll see we get our initial roughing, our rest roughing, our parallel machining, followed by the steep and shallow, and then the machining of the remaining material. There's the collision free steep and shallow with the shorter tool. And then we come in with the longer tool just to finish off those remaining regions. Like so. There's my completed part. Fully collision checked.